Everybody needs to be strengthened. Everybody needs to be encouraged. If you're on the front lines, if you're called of God, if you carry destiny, that doesn't make you exempt from needing these things. In fact, it likely means you need it that much more to be strengthened and to be encouraged. Because if you're in the heat of a battle or a threat to the enemy, then that much more so the enemy tries to resist us and battle us, discourage us, get us weakened. And so that much more we need to be connecting to the things that strengthen and the things that encourage. And so uh, I've been taking my text from Jude 117. I was there on Sunday. I'm going to read it again. Jude 117. The 17th verse. Lord, I, I just pray tonight you speak to our hearts and that something be imparted tonight. That we be not hearers only, but also doers of the word. Speak through my heart, my lips today unto your people by your spirit, hiding my flesh behind your cross. But let something be imparted tonight that brings about strength, encouragement, and change in Jesus' name. Amen. So in Jude 1.17, the scripture says, But beloved, remember the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last times who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. These be they who separate themselves, sensual, having not the spirit, but ye beloved. And so there's a distinction being made from one group who is being identified as seeking their own ways, giving precedence to the flesh, becoming mockers. And something that we would see in the last times. But then he speaks to the beloved and says, you, beloved, building up yourselves, building up yourselves. He gives us responsibility here, a commission. That we have a part to play in what God wills to do on the inside of our hearts. That the places God wills to strengthen us, that the place God wills to encourage us, we have a part to play in doing what we need to do to connect to the pipelines or the resources of heaven where these things flow. If we do not connect to them, I used the illustration last week, you have a vehicle, but it's not your vehicle's fault when it runs out of gas. That's not really a breakdown. That's just needed gas. <laughs> Amen. Some of us are like, I'm having a breakdown. No, you need some gas. <laughs> no, you don't understand. I'm having a breakdown. Have you been gassing up the tank? Because there's a big difference in your engine going and not just getting the gas that you need or the power. Hello, somebody. <laughs> For all those Tesla owners or what have you. What you need to keep going. Build yourselves in your most holy faith. Build yourselves up in your faith. Praying in the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to spend just a couple minutes talking about that very part again. Praying in the Spirit. And I touched on it, but I'll, I'll go here again. And, and just for the sake of those who weren't here. When I was first filled with the Holy Spirit, with the evidence of other tongues. I spoke such few words at the altar. That it, it wasn't as though I just had some vocabulary downloaded into me. In fact, if the preacher didn't get so excited saying, he got it, he got it, I might not even have realized I got it hardly. Except I felt my tongue moving a little bit. I don't know what I said. Is it not, I mean, I didn't hear myself speaking is what I'm trying to say. But I felt my tongue moving. And a preacher, well, it wasn't even really a preacher, just a gentleman in the church says to me, if you don't use it, you'll lose it. That's right. And that stuck with me. And I had sought so long for it, I definitely didn't want to lose it. I wanted to be active in it, stirred up in it. And while I don't think you can just totally lose that experience, you have to be active in the things that God deposits in you. This will go for all areas. We have to be active 
in the things that God deposits in us. We have to be active in prayer. We have to be active in faith. We have to act, be active in worship. You know, it's not just like, oh yeah, I prayed that one time. I think I'm good. No, you've got to be active in prayer. Well, yeah, I used to be quite a worshiper, Pastor. Wonderful. Wonderful. Where'd it go? What happened to him? Activate that again. Get active in the worship. Activate the things that God has deposited in you. Fanning the flames on those things because we have to stay active. So I took what I had, went into my prayer closet, not really knowing how to use what God gave me. But through faith, through faith, I started just praying in the spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. Praying in other tongues. Things that the mind doesn't know what was being said. But yet the communication, the prayer language that God had given me, spirit to spirit. Bypassing the mind, but connecting to God. Yes. Praying in the spirit is so powerful in building ourselves up. Amen. Because our spirit is being edified, even though we might not recall or recognize with our natural minds what it is that's being deposited, what it is that's happening. It might not be revealed to all of our senses, but yet in the spirit, as our spirit is edified, as we're edified within, it begins to flow throughout all faculties of our life. It, it, it touches all over the place. So what, just like when we're not strong spiritually, it, that flows out to all areas. We feel it. We, we feel depleted. We feel discouraged. We, we feel that emptiness. Right? Because just like a car that starts chugging along, you feel the difference. It like starts convulsing or something. And, and you can't just say, well, just calm down, you. What's wrong with you? Calm down. No, you, it's got to get what it needs. It's got to get filled. And we are spiritual people. We're called to be spiritual people. Can't say that for everyone in the church. But we're called to be spiritual people. Amen. To be in the spirit. To connect to the spirit. To move in the spirit. To be filled with the spirit. Praying in the Holy Ghost. So I, I said I took that and I just started to pray. Until it became the way where you know I, I, I could just pray in tongues continually. How did that happen? Well, I don't even know how to lay it all out for you in 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 step by step guide of how that came about. But I can tell you today, I received that promise from God with hunger and passion and faith, and then I stayed active in that in the same way by faith, speaking out of my spirit, letting it come out, letting it flow. You see, our head tries to get in in the way of what the spirit wills to do in our lives. Our heads will get in the way of what the spirit wills to do. And so the enemy, when the spirit wants to move in our way in a certain way, the spirit of God, where the spirit of God wants to bring about a breakthrough, an increase, a promotion. Well, many times the enemy goes to work on the mind, trying to interfere and get in the way of what the spirit is trying to bring us to. And so sometimes it's that very thing where we're being battled in the mind about that God is wanting to bring breakthrough in. The, the, the Lord is wanting to heal you of insecurity, but your mind is constantly attacked right now with insecurity. Just in battle there. Because the enemy is trying to interfere and get your head in the way of what the spirit wills to do. That's why Romans said we're not to be conformed to the world, but transformed by the renewing of our minds. Amen. So, so that we wear this area where the enemy tries so hard to snare us and battle us. We, we bring our minds back to the word of God. So that we start getting God's thoughts on us. And start thinking like God's thinking and, and confessing that because we can't just be dormant in those seasons. We need to be active, connecting to the things that will strengthen us and will encourage us. So praying in the Holy Spirit, praying in things you don't even know need to be prayed about, praying in intimate things. I shared this before. I'm hesitant to share it again. 
<laughs> Just because it brought about some funny things the first time I shared it. And I don't recommend this to everybody. This is not what you should do. This is what I did. <laughs> and in this instance, it came about really cool. <laughs> but not everybody, it went like that. So I was, I was at this season where I was really seeking God, I think, for just to know him as father. There's, the Lord was really speaking to me that, about that, revealing himself to me as father. And I was, I was going through many things in, in life in relation to the absence of my, my natural father and all the things that, that, that encompass that. And I found myself praying in the spirit one day and this phrase that just kept coming out over and over and it was a Baba. I, I remember still what it was. It was a Baba. And I, I was just praying in the spirit and uh, that just kept coming out. And this is what I'm saying. You, you don't have to do this, but I'm just telling you, I had this idea to try and Google what a Baba means because I understand that many times we're praying in the spirit and there's another language that, that we're praying in. And so, so I, I did and fitting exactly to what the Lord was revealing in my life, I found that it was like Nigerian or something like that. I can't remember exactly which nationality it was, but that this language, I found this song and they're singing, hey Baba, hey Baba. And they were singing Father. That's what they were singing, Father. And, and so I just thought it was so amazing that, that the very thing that the Lord was speaking to me about and, and revealing himself to me this cry in my spirit where in my flesh I have this this emptiness or this hurt and then my spirit crying out father 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 amen because I'm not an orphan nor are you amen we're, we're sons and we're daughters of the most high God hallelujah we have a heavenly father we all need to be encouraged we all we all need to be strengthened I remember hearing about one time where I believe as a young preacher went to this church and preaching revival meetings. And, and when he went in, the Lord just told him, preach encouragement. So first night he preached encouragement. Second night again, got up and he just preached encouragement. The Lord told him again, preach encouragement. He just kept on preaching encouragement every night of those segment of the meetings. And then towards the end, when he's sitting in the pastor's office. And, and, and having a conversation with the pastor, the pastor pulls a pistol out of his desk and says, this is where I've been. And then the Lord sent this man here where this pastor is in such a crisis where, where he feels like ending it. And then the, the Lord just bringing in encouragement, 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 because we all battle things in life and go through things and, and many times people have no idea some of the things that you might be struggling with or you might be going through but God knows amen, amen. but God knows and it's imperative that we connect to him not just when things are good but also when things are bad amen. because that's the time the enemy wants us to stop praying stop worshiping stop reading the word stop going to church and those are really the four things that I've been pinpointing throughout this series. And I realized we probably could have did a lesson or several lessons on each one of them. But I've been just touching little bits about each one of them as we go. And the first one of those was prayer. Prayer is like important. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> it really matters. So one of the uh, first things that is a sign of someone losing their, their walk with God getting out of sync with God as their prayer life starts to disappear. I read this recently online. I'll just share it with you. This was written by a pastor. I don't know him, but it says, after almost 21 years of ministry, I can tell you these are some of the signs that you are backsliding. The first one was you stop communicating with your pastor. And I, I, I can tell you that that's a, that is a, a, a big thing that happens for sure. And the enemy wants to get you out of sync with your leadership, whether it be because you're offended with your leadership and now, now you're angry at them or, or you're guilty. You feel guilty. You know, you're, like, you're not doing what you're supposed to do, so can't talk to the man of God. And so you, you stop connecting at that level. And so you stop communicating with your pastor too. You miss church more often than usual and you disfellowship with the church body. 
Three, you find yourself easily offended, especially at leaders. And prayer is not just a part of your daily life and you begin to justify it. You take on things that God convicted you to get rid of. You find someone to blame for your spiritual condition. You find someone to blame for the state that you're in. Well, if, if they wouldn't have hurt me, I wouldn't, I wouldn't be here where I am right now. And I, oh, this whole mess is on them. And though there may be some element of truth, we always have the responsibility to, to make a choice when people hurt us, how we respond and where we go from there. There's things that I've been through that hurt really deep that I can look back on and be like, I wouldn't change that even if I could. Because even though it was so painful, what God did through the process was that much more valuable, even outweighed the pain. Even outweighed the pain. And though the pain is not pleasant and not a pleasant memory, and you think back on it and all of the emotions and all those other things that are involved. But yet the Lord can do tremendous things. If we position ourselves in the right places. And so we start sometimes finding blame instead of just looking to the Lord. Amen. Instead of looking to God. Well, as the pastor hasn't been praying for me enough. You know, whatever. Finding blame. I think that I, I need this person more. And they haven't been there. I, and, you know, whatever. There's so many things that you can point to. You know, when people get frustrated, when people get angry, we often just look for somewhere to direct it. Amen. And oftentimes we don't direct it where it should be. And so sometimes people are upset with God and then they get upset with the pastor. <laughs> it happens because that's just where it flows. They're disconnected with God and then they become disconnected with the pastor. These things just kind of go together or go hand in hand. I think, I think it's sad sometimes that uh, some of the people that we blame and things that are often the people that have been helping us the most or loving us most. I was considering how it, it's, it's sad that probably the people that get the most blunt of our bad days are the people who love us the most. Amen. I'll say it again. The people who get the biggest impact of the blunt, they get they get the the blow up of the bad days that we're having or what we're going through yes. are the people that love us the most. They're the ones who we're short with. They're the ones we snap at. They're the ones we ignore. They're the ones we're mad at. Why aren't you doing more for me right now? I need you. The ones that love us the most. I, I, I know that that's not the way it should be. I know that I shouldn't be kinder to the Tim Hortons guy than I should be to, to my spouse or to my pastor or, 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 you know, to my mother or, you know, just wherever let your mind go. But you put your professional face on with them and then the real you comes out later. And while I certainly recognize the value and the importance of being able to be real, amen, and thank God that we all need those places where we can just be real, it shouldn't, but it unfortunately does many times, go to that place rather where we're looking to blame or just taking it in that direction out on somebody, the ones that probably love us the most. The last one was you drop your ministry responsibilities. Along with these things comes guilt, condemnation, and shame. And you find yourself seeking refuge in a lot of things that you know will not help you. Because when we start getting disconnected with the Lord, we end up connecting to other things to try and fill. And many of those things that, that are sinful and destructive and, and that, that wrap our soul in chains, in chains, and God wants to heal us and God wants to free us. Um, talking about prayer again. I've been in this verse in James. I really like it. <laughs> James 5.13. Why don't you turn there with me? Whatever Bible you got, I'll be reading New Living Translation. As long as it's the Bible, you know, follow with what you got. 
Are any of you suffering hardships? You should pray. Are any of you happy? You should sing praises. Are any of you sick? You should call for the elders of the church to come and pray over you, anointing you with oil in the name of the Lord. Such a prayer offered in faith will heal the sick. So it's such a prayer offered how? With faith that will heal the sick. And the Lord will make you well. Amen. Amen. You know, reaching out and connecting is so important for our breakthroughs, for our healings. That we're joining to the things that are bringing life. Because the enemy he tries to isolate us. I was going to use, I had the image prepared in the overhead, Kenzie knows because she was probably looking for it to be brought up. But it's like what it would look like if I don't need the church was an animal. And it's, it's you know, it shows this animal, whatever, running all the way by itself, being surrounded. And, and it separated itself from the pack. I wish I had the image because I feel like I just really butchered that description. <laughs> But it's when you separate yourself from the pack and you know, all of a sudden you're being surrounded by wolves and all these things because the enemy tries to isolate us, get us stuck in our own heads, stuck in our feelings. And we end up breaking a lot of those things that edify so much. And, and so if you have committed any sins, you will be forgiven. Confess your sins to each other and pray for each other so that you might be healed. Isn't it wonderful to have somebody that you can talk to? Isn't it wonderful that you have somebody? And I hope that you do. And maybe you do and haven't utilized it yet because this takes trust. Also wisdom. Also wisdom. Who you talk to. Who you share with and be open with. Because not everybody responds with compassion. Not everybody responds with wisdom. Not everybody responds with privacy amen. amen so don't be surprised when you shared your most intimate secrets with the biggest gossip in town and it went beyond them maybe you had a little bit higher expectations than you should have <laughs> but there is something so beautiful in having people in your life that you can be real with honest with and that are actually with you you actually with you not just there for what you can do for them not just there for some of the abilities that you have not just there for your money there for you there for you and so if you lost it all started acting like a fool they would still be there loving you amen. although everybody still has limits amen. somebody say amen, amen. <laughs> So don't be surprised when even those closest to you have limits. And don't blame them because they were wise enough to have boundaries. The earnest prayer of a righteous man has great power and produces wonderful results. The Amplified Bible says, The earnest, heartfelt, continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available and it's dynamic in its working a sincere fervent prayer a hot prayer passionate prayer sincere prayer heartfelt prayer not just not just prayer that that is looking to get something and and not just prayer that is religious or repetitious but a fervent hot Prayer. You see, I think some of the church has lost that. What it was like to pray with passion. Get a hold of God. Seek the face of God. Learn how to cry out and be hungry for God. Amen. And they'll talk about, well, we all need to pray. Let's just keep on praying. But yet nobody has that hunger, or that fire, or that passion in their prayer that actually connects with God, prays and touches God until God touches us. But there is most certainly something to be said about passionate prayer. Not that it's all emotional all the time or dramatic. But yet sometimes, yes, heartfelt, dramatic, <laughs> sometimes. I'm not saying just trying to get a response from God by how animated you're being. 
You're praying still in faith. But but with the, the hunger that's in your heart, the passion that's in your heart, you know, I, I think if you if you're hungry for revival, passionate for revival, that doesn't just come out of a natural man. Natural men don't really care about that. People that aren't on fire for God, people that, you know, they'll talk about it, but they don't really want to do anything to get it. People that have sat in churches for 50 years will talk about revival. Just waiting for revival. We can't wait for revival. Are you sure about that? Because revival is not always the way that people expect. And when we look at revival, some of the things that revival brought with it in the Bible, it, it would bring upset, unrest to many people. It wasn't at all what some people wanted, and they wouldn't have called it revival. But yet it was an outpouring of the Holy Spirit, amen? And, and, and the unbelievers coming in and receiving Christ because of the fire, amen, that was on the church. The fire that was on the church. And we need to get the fire back. I said we need to get the fire back. Amen. We need to get the fire back. Hallelujah. Our prayer meeting shouldn't be silent. Our church services shouldn't be silent. Amen. There should be a noise and a sound of praise and a sound of prayer and a sound of enthusiasm and a sound of joy and a sound of an excitement and a, and a sound of a hunger and a sound of a passion, a sound of a need, even a, even a sound of pain that, that is being expressed to the Lord in, in our, our deep need for him. And so a fervency is needed again, amen, where we get hungry. Don't, don't be complacent about things that God wants to give you. Don't be complacent about your breakthroughs. Don't be complacent about the promises of God that he has given it to you, that, that he's promised you. Well, if I get it, I get it. No, no, no. Receive it with faith and say, in my, it's mine in the name of Jesus. Amen. It's mine in the name of Jesus. Because that's how Jesus taught us to pray, saying that if we believe that we receive, then we have those things that we pray for. We're not just letting out empty words that we have no expectation of ever happening, but that we believe and we receive. And so we don't want to be complacent and, and just, just, you know, not doing our part. To connect to the things that God wants to bring into our life. Pray with faith. Pray with fire. Pray with passion. And I'm going to just close on this part. I'm not going to get into some of the others today. Because we're getting on in time. But I got to talk about worship again. Amen. Amen. Orlin, why don't you share with me what you said on to me on last Bible study. But yet what Orland wouldn't realize so much to his credit, Orland, that you being the young man that you are, still having that hunger, a teachable spirit. Because I can tell you, a lot of folks have lost both of those things along the way in what was supposed to be their journey, but just, just those became dormant in those things. I just wish that 40 something. <laughs> I was around 40 years ago. <laughs> I was just a wee guy, but I was there. <laughs> anyway, I just I love that. I mean, he told me that you now he just puts on his phone sometimes, put music on his phone, and worship just starts to flow. That's what, that's what he said, right? In that place of worship, you know, Wade has a ministry that 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 God just led him into 
hope you don't mind me sharing, where he'll, he'll sit down with men sometimes and just, just, to, just do worship. He plays worship music on a speaker and they just worship God. It's beautiful because a lot of men have a hard time worshiping. They have a hard time expressing that or, or, or knowing how to do that. But that's a beautiful ministry. And, and, you know, in that atmosphere and setting of worship, the things that happen for us, it changes us. It alters us in a place of worship. Because if we really entertain the presence of the Lord, we will not be able to leave like we came. Yeah. We'll leave edified, we'll leave encouraged, we'll leave refreshed, sometimes we'll leave broken, like surrendered, yielded, amen? Yeah. You know, did you ever come out of the presence of God just feeling like he just took you apart? He did. Things can happen in the presence of God that are beyond even your understanding or what you even realize is happening. The greatest experiences are, are hard to define and can't be defined with words, but happen in the presence of a holy God. Because, you know, we're touched sometimes by one another's presence. And that's another part I was going to get into, the part that we need fellowship and encouragement in that setting. But we can consider just sometimes what it means somebody else's presence in our life. And I, you know, think I like having them around because when they're around, they make me laugh. Or when they're around, you know, I just, I, you know, the, the good things that come from somebody's presence. Now, th now, that's a lot more than just the fact that they're there, but it's, or what the words that they have, it's who they are, right? It's, there's, there's, there's something built in them. There's that, like, like that, their presence changes things. Somebody's presence can change the whole atmosphere. What about God? And all that, that's what it means when he's present, he's there. He's manifesting his presence and he's there. And all that he is, his glory, things that we can't describe, but he's, he's there. How could I ever be the same? How, how could I be untouched? One of the scariest things for me causes a big uh-oh in my spirit is when I see somebody who's supposed to be saved or supposed to be on fire for the Lord, and you know the presence of God is there, but they seem completely desensitized to it. Yes, that's right. Don't ever want to be there. Don't ever want to be there. More concerned about everything else going on than taking time to recognize and reverence the presence of God. Amen. His presence his peace, his presence is joy, his presence is power, his, his presence is life. There's healing, there's freedom, there's liberty in the presence of the Lord. And so the scripture said he inhabits the praises of his people. And when we begin to worship the Lord, now I'm, I'm telling you a lot of things that worship does for us and how we are benefited from it. But worship isn't for us, it's for the Lord. That, that's where it comes from. It's because we want to we want to honor him, love him, bring him glory. Even when it's a sacrifice. Even when it hurts. Even when it's the opposite of what we feel. Learning how to abandon some of those feelings and some of those frustrations and some of those hurts. And bring him a sacrifice of praise anyway. Because worship has so much to do with abandonment. I mean, deep worship. Not just a, just a traditional go through the motions. You know, we, we learn how to do things. Some of us, we just are so accustomed to worshiping at a certain level that we, we've lost that pursuit, lost that hunger, lost that fire and desire. Amen. And so concerned about everything else that's going on that we, we sometimes miss out because, again, we let our heads get in the way. Of what the spirit wills to do. But there's something so beautiful about worship. When we start learning to abandon. And just start honoring him. And just 
you know, and the devil's there. He's like, you're so unfit for this, but you abandon that too, and you just keep on worshiping the Lord. And the devil, you got no right to be worshiping God, but you abandon that too. And you keep worshiping the Lord. And he whispers in your ear, don't you know so-and-so are here today? And they know what you used to do. They know what you used to be like. You think they think you should be praising, but you abandon that too. Because you're not carrying their opinion. You're, you're bringing a sacrifice of praise. Just learning to abandon and just worship the Lord and just, just, just love him. Let it flow out of your heart and out of your spirit. In that atmosphere, there's life. We're strengthened. We're encouraged. Amen. Yeah. And so I'm going to close there tonight. But uh, uh, did anybody else have something that you would want to share that might just be in line with what I'm saying here tonight in, in regards to these things that strengthen us, encourage us, or in the last part that we talked about worship? Maybe something that's touched your heart, an experience that you've had? And just take it a couple minutes, anybody? Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Amen. That's pretty strong. It is. Sometimes I think, you know, as you're worshiping that, it kind of goes up and down like anything else, right? Sometimes you feel more like worshiping. So granted that. But when I get to the point where it's kind of petering off a little bit, I think of what the disciples did in 24 hours of David lived there. John the Baptist, what they had done, I can ever do it, you know, kind of encourages me. Yeah. Paul and Silas in prison, you know, the whole night. That's back, right. So. Wade, what would you say is, I don't know, I'm putting you on the spot, but what, what, what thing you would say that you would take away from some of what you've experienced in the ministry that you've done there in worship? What would it be? Or what would you say is a struggle that you've seen too for people? Like, why were they, were they how worship's hard for them? And some of the change you've seen in them when they do. Men, men in general, I, I believe women are a lot freer to worship than men. I'm actually struggling right now. I've been struggling for a while. I, uh, I've been having quite a battle uh, with worshiping. I haven't stopped listening to my music. I mean, my music with me is just close together. But uh, I kind of feel like a physical bell. I, I got tired. I got real tired when I was worshiping the Lord the way I was. It's very physical. Close to two months, and I didn't realize how tired I was. But 
in, in the process of it, we need to put the thoughts aside because the enemy does bombard you, even though you are there worshiping. Uh, men become really self-aware when we're worshiping because we don't have the freedom that I feel that the women have to worship. And that's one of the biggest stepping stones I believe for men is to, that, that's at least what was placed upon my heart to help men to get past that. And uh, I'm not sure where some of the men are at right now, but that's okay. I know that I still, uh, I have a lot of questions for myself and I'm just getting back into it. I was actually, uh, in the last week, I've just been realizing that I need to get back to where I was. Because I know I'm missing out, and I know uh, you'll dry up without it, and you need to stay in it, just like prayer. You gotta stay in prayer. You gotta stay in worship. If you don't, we notice it. it's a little dry in the house uh, because there's a lot of freedom there, but we've also had a couple of people at the house, and it's not the same. The atmosphere is different, yeah. and it's the atmosphere that has to be the it's big. Thing. It's a big thing. It's a big. It's a huge thing. Yeah. Reminds me, Wade, uh, just to add this thought in there too, that many times when we're worshiping, as we often find ourselves battling spiritual forces too, that really have nothing to do with so much our own issues or our own struggles sometimes, but just the enemy trying to resist. I'm talking especially corporate worship, where we're together, you know, and, and the enemy try, and tries to just battle us there. If we don't know how to push through that and, and put some things aside, the, we might miss out on some of the blessings that the, the, the Lord had intended for that service and for that meeting because we easily just give in to some of the things or we start taking them as like, oh yeah, it's all me. And you don't even realize it was just the enemy trying to stop something in the whole setting because worshipers can change the atmosphere, right? That's why the enemy will battle people that are worshipers too, even in their personal life because that worship is powerful. Like if people come into the church and it's dead and dry and they don't and there's nothing there that touches them, they can easily leave unchanged. But if they come in and there's people that have prepared an atmosphere with prayer, with worship, it can make all the difference. Amen. So there's no minimizing how important it is to worship and the kind of effect it has because it changes the atmosphere. One of the things that tripped me up is somebody said something to me and I let it get. And I have to, uh, my, my, my question next time will be like, is this from you or is this from God? And I would know. And I let it get up here. And when it gets up here, you have to be real careful then because it'll affect you here. Yeah. And I let it affect me and uh, just, I wish I would know. But at the same time, it's still all about him. It's not me. I, I mean, the depths of the worship that I entered into, I've never been there before. It was, it, it, it was, it was wild. I think these guys, well, they, they heard me, right? It's like, I wasn't trying to put on a show. I just, got, I just got lost. In, I just got so lost in worship. I thought, I'm going to break through somewhere and not going to get back or not. It was that, it was that intense for some people. I mean, I, you know, um, I can't even explain it. You have to be there yourself, but it was incredible. Something that I will never forget, but I want to get back to it. That's the beautiful thing of worship, is we do experience things that you don't know how to describe. No, it's and that you can't find anywhere else. No, it was indescribable. Yeah. As an observer, what I, what I saw that was really actually very beautiful It's when we would meet with, with men that were kind of built, but not, not really knowing how to worship, you know, a lot of them are new, and, and just, they don't really know how to, but what happened is already there's unity, because they're coming for a purpose, they're coming to meet with Jesus, and to worship Jesus, and that's all, that's all they knew, that, and as an observer, it is really true, those men, and wait, at the end of it, whatever it was, we're both encouraged and changed. And that from from an outsider, we may have joined from a distance, but
but then it's, it's a beautiful thing because it's not, it, it's, we didn't really know what to do. He just knew God wanted it to be put together for us. And then he did it. And God, God definitely did something. Absolutely. And, and it was good for everybody. Well, I'm going to ask everyone to stand with me tonight. I'm going to close us in prayer. Thank you, Lord. I'm going to ask my wife to close us in prayer tonight. Father, thank you, Lord, for your presence here. Thank you, Lord, for your word. And I just pray, God, that your word would go deep in our hearts, and that we would remember, and that we would respond, Lord. Father, and that we would receive your word, Lord, in Jesus' name. I just pray for everyone here. Thank you that you're with us and to bring us back together again. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 God bless everyone. Thank you for coming out tonight.